meeting of the Delnort Local Transportation Commission to order. And uh, Susan, if you would take roll. Here. 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 And I'm Commissioner Starkey, and I'm filling in for Commissioner Hemmingson, who's retired. Okay. Hemmingson. I am here. Thank you. Uh, if you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time uh, is our public comment period. Anybody wishing to make public comments regarding matters either on or off the agenda is uh, welcome to do so at this time. So we are not allowed to uh, act on non-agendized items. Is there any member of the public? Is there any public online with Tasha? There is a oh. If you would allow that, please. I forgot I need to be doing this too. Sorry, I'm, I'll get caught up here. I, I don't have any audio. I, I don't have any audio on the Zoom meeting, just so you know. Me too. Okay, just checking. Um, I can send them a note. We can hear them. And that, that is the, uh, the sum of the public comment, is that? And McKenzie, are you able to fi fix that? My mic is on, yes. Okay, I can hear you guys now. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, I will uh, close the public comment period and we will adjourn to the Policy Advisory Committee and uh, get straight to business because we got a room full of people here. I'm going to skip consent for right now and move to policy advisory or policy admin and administrative. The uh, CRISA uh, TAC and staff recommendation consider the city and county proposals and project updates and direct staff to draft a resolution to award CRISA funding. Where do we want to start? Um, well, just to give a brief summary, that we had a conversation about this topic in our last meeting. The Transportation Commission voted to delay a decision until this meeting. They had some additional questions for the City of Crescent City and the County of Del Norte. And the City and County have both responded to those questions in writing, and those answers are in the agenda packet. For anybody who missed that meeting, the... Um, the minutes reflect the content of the discussion in the last meeting. The, I believe the city and county both have staff representatives here to answer, answer questions and represent their reports. Very good. Um, is there any questions or discussions among the commission members for city or county staff? No. Everybody's all quiet. Well, we have a decision to make between uh, awarding the CRISA funding to the city or to the county. Uh, if we don't have any questions or discussion, then I'll entertain a motion. Uh, well, yeah, we're, given, ahead, the, given the information that's in the, in the staff report and with the information that we've found, I, I think that the-, the, the Recording the, in progress. The sorry. most- Just sorry about that. Sorry about that. Good? Okay. okay. The, the, I guess not. No. I don't know what happened here. I just, okay, we're good. All right. The, 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 the most pressing component for, for the Washington project is to, is to get, the, get the, the, the design done. 
I mean, it's not ready for to, to for construction, um, and so there's about an eighty thousand dollars shortfall to make sure that there's funding to get that done. That seems to be the county's should be the highest priority because you can't can't leverage the five hundred fifteen thousand dollars to do anything right now until the the design work is done. There's a gap there with the 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 funding that we've received from federal government through uh, Congressman Huffman of the $750,000, when you add the 515 to that, that gets Front Street all the way to Play Street, and that's ready to go this year. So I, I, none of that, the, the question previously was, is water still flowing through the culvert? Is there an intimate risk that Washington Street is going to collapse? Well, what I read said that, that it needs to be done as soon as possible. That can't happen until the design work is done. So that's a process. Um, and uh, Front Street can be done now. So with that, and given the, the, the question that was asked last month about, well, do you know, when are you gonna know whether or not you're gonna get the federal funding? Well, we know it's in our packet. We got, we've got the funding. Um, so um, my, my opinion has not changed. I think that the, 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 the best use of the funding is into something that can be done now, I think that there's other sources that we can find $80,000 for, for the, the county to make sure that they have the resources necessary to get the, uh, um, the planning and technical design done for the Western um, Street culvert. So, so with that, if, if, there's, if there's not anything else, I, I, would, I would make a motion that we award the Carissa funding of, um, to the city of Front Street project. We'll have a motion. Any other? Do I have a second? I'll second that. Any other further discussion? Um, I'd just like to say I think both projects have their merits. I think both are important, and um, I think that we need to prioritize prioritize, prioritize both. Um, as uh, Commissioner Inscor just stated, I do believe that the um, Front Street project is more. Uh, is closer to a, a project, an actual project. It has uh, the plans, the specifications. We're, uh, we're ready to go to bid. Um, the Washington project is, is not as far along, and I, I, I'm committed to funding both projects um, personally. So if we can find funding for the county in the sum of eighty thousand dollars to to get them going in their design i'm i'm all for that as well so for the discussion i think is that correct here? yes so all right who from the county is going to come up and talk about this john that's what yeah. i was hoping for can't make it. yeah thank you so john we had a chance to look at your report for some statements from the commissioners uh, specific to Commissioner Enscore, <clears throat> there is an eminent risk to failure, right? There is an eminent risk to failure. Um, the, the pipe is open. There's some missing coupons in the sides of the pipe that can allow piping, uh, moving the materials from the roadbed into that culvert. Um, we, we see a lot of large cobbles and things in the bottom of the culvert also, so there's evidence that the material is moving. Uh, what, to what extent? Well, I, I don't see roadbed failure. John, let me stop you there. Is his mic on? Mm-hmm. Is okay. I just wanted to make sure that the people listening in could hear you. you Seem pretty quiet. So. 
All right. Oh, hey, that's much go. better. Excellent. And and to continue this train of discussion, there's obviously this project design piece that needs mm -hmm. to happen for the larger piece of this, not just the slip pipe would yep. be a temporary fix. Yep. If everything goes well, that project design piece takes how long? Uh, design, I think, in the schedule is about two years because there's environmental studies and all of those things. Those are seasonal, so that's some of the reasons for the extended design time. Um, I, I'm hoping that we could reduce it down to, you know, 18 months, but I don't, I don't really see that as super feasible just because of the uh, environmental constraints there. So. Right. And is there the same environmental constraints and you just going in there on an emergency basis no. and slipping a pipe in there? No. And what does something like that run? Uh, I think that we're going to be somewhere around the $60,000 range. The piping alone uh, is about $20,000 to deliver on site. And, and talking with our road crew, uh, they feel like they would be willing to attempt to shove that pipe through there. So. Yeah. So no matter what, we're not doing anything this year, and we're probably not doing anything for two, two and a half years. I would say two, two years would be the minimum. So. What does uh, funding look like for next year, Tamara? Was, are we going to have a similar discussion next year with CRISA funding? I don't believe so. No. There's no... I don't have any indicators that CRISA funding is going to repeat. It may, but... I don't have any indicators for that. Um, we do have an increase in our RSTP funding because of the CRISA funding, but again, that increase will probably not repeat. We receive about, I'm going to give you rough numbers, $380,000, $400,000 of RSTP funding annually, and that does repeat. We get that funding every year. but. I mean, and I should say 350 to 400,000. I, I never have any idea what that funding amount is going to be, where we're going to be at that funding amount, but we receive that funding on an annual basis. That's the funding that we, we predominantly use, and not always, by no means always, but we predominantly use that funding for match funding, um, for mostly for city and county projects, but sometimes for tribal projects. Um, sometimes for a harbor project, we've used that funding to help bridge if they have a gap, that kind of thing. We rarely use that funding on a single project. Not never. Thank you. Just a question, Chair. Uh, Tamara, could, would RSTP money be eligible for uh, a, a short-term solution such as um, uh, 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 what um, Mr. Olson spoke about? Yes. I have a question just because I'm kind of late to the game here, but isn't some of this funding that we're talking about, couldn't we put that toward the planning phase so that we could have that, those estimates done, that the 554 that we're talking about today? Um, I can answer that. That, that. That's not a planning phase, that's an engineering phase, and we can't spend planning funding on engineering. So we would need the same fund source to pay for the engineering. Okay, because my information here is that the entire Washington Culvert project was about $2.4 million, correct? Yeah, and that was a very rough estimate. I'm going to speak here, but anybody from the county can stop me. That was a very rust, rough estimate from the county engineers because you have to guess. And until you do your engineering, it's hard to have a certain idea. This was even before the inspections were done. So they came up with some kind of an estimate. Um, the county staff was clear at the time that that was probably low, but they had to come up with something to have some idea, goal to work for. Um, regarding the um, engineering, there's also a preliminary engineering, and we discussed in the TAC meeting potentially using preliminary engineering funding our planning, programming, and monitoring funding for grant applications in general. And there are um, a couple of agencies who are interested in looking at the possibility of using PPM funding for assisting with the information needed to develop a grant application. Okay. I would just like to follow that up with uh, 
the county has already put in uh, a REAP 2.0 grant application seeking all the funding for construction. Uh, there's also another upcoming application uh, that's called a BRIC, and I'm not, I just heard about it today, and, and I, so I don't know what the exact uh, acronym is, but uh, it's, it's something to do with infrastructure um, that could potentially be a, a good fit, but that won't be till closer to the end of the year, so. So, John, sorry. John, just to be clear, we need to obviously buy ourselves some time, mm -hmm. right? And the slip pipe, we have to figure that piece of it out like this year. Yep. Like ASAP, probably before the winter's over, get that in, $80,000 estimate. Um, the pieces with the planning, right? That was a half million for that mm -hmm. CEQA project element. And then that doesn't include engineering on top of that. That, that does include uh, the engineering that piece. Does so it's the environmental and engineering. So you're getting complete uh, plans and specifications, as well as all your environmental documentation. And, and to be clear, we have nothing in the hopper other than the funds that you guys are requesting today to start that process. What, so what we have is the highway infrastructure program funds. We have 209,000 there. Um, and then the remaining, uh, the remainder of the 530 in total that we have secured to date is uh, the regional surface transportation program, which is our flexible money, our most flexible funds from, sure. uh, from RS, uh, from RSTP. Oh, yeah, RSTP. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Well, I'd be certainly willing to go along with Commissioner Enscore, if we could find some way to fund the slip pipe for the county. Tamara, do we still, do we, is the RSTP money, it's fiscal money, right? Fiscal year money? Um, yes, but it, it accumulates over time. Do we still have, I guess my, I just go ask my question. How, do we have a, a balance in our RSTP funds? Um, yeah, and I thought that was in the last agenda packet. It may have been, but I can't no, remember. No, it's okay. I should I'm have sorry. included it here. Let me just pull it up. Um, Uh, in just dis discussing with Heidi, um, for the, for the slip lining, because of the funding requirements, whatever tracking or additional requirements might be put on us at the federal level, it might be smarter, especially for the emergency nature of this project to utilize uh, a more local source. So like, like the RSTP, but, or our, or county only funds. So 100%, Tamara, 100% of the, the CRISA funds would be right now allocated to the city's project. Right, and um, we do have funding. In this spreadsheet, I'm not sure that this is our most up-to-date spreadsheet, but I think that it is by my document search, that we have um, $594,000 available for projects. But, but when I, I need for everybody to really understand because we've needed this money in the past for emergencies like on Cooper Avenue, um, where if we spend all this money, everybody starts to get nervous. Um, I, I, if, the, if the Transportation Commission voted to award this money for Front Street, I would also recommend that the Transportation Commission direct me to work with the county to fund their next phase of the Washington Boulevard culvert. We would come back into the next meeting with the documents needed to fund the CRISA funding, because I don't have that ready because I didn't know what the decision was going to be. So that would be in a consent agenda. And also we would have a discussion about the next steps for Washington Boulevard. What I don't want is to lose a day of work on Washington Boulevard because of money. I, I just, I don't want us to be waiting for funding on that. Um, it, you know, certainly not in these early phases. 
Yeah, I, I, that's, that's exactly what I would like to see us do is to, for you to work with the county and have something actionable for us at our next meeting to be able to allocate the, whatever that is. We don't know what that is, but it is, I don't know, looking at, at John, is that is that a reasonable thing for you to be able to work with Tamara and come back with something that we can yeah. potentially fund in, in yeah. February? Well, what I would so. be thinking to follow up on Commissioner Enscore's thoughts on this, you've got a 209 available to you right now. You need a half million. I'd be looking for some coverage of the slip pipe plus the remaining balance right. to get to that the yes. end of that planning yeah. phase. Yeah. Right. So we already have 321,000 allocated to the county of RSTP funding for Washington Boulevard. And so we would be um, making basically making a second allocation to that that um, that would include the funding they needed to get to the next step that would also include this temporary solution. So how this process works, it's, I think it's just important for people to understand is the city and county take a look at their needs and they give me a call and I, we talk about how we're gonna figure this out and after we have a conversation, they write a letter. And the letter goes to the TAC, the TAC makes a recommendation to the commission and the commission votes on the work. That's the traditional way that the city or county or a different agency um, works with the Transportation Commission as a partner. Yep. Very good. Okay. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Well, we have a motion and a second on the table. We'll work on that direction here in a little bit. But, uh, Susan, would you pull the vote? Did we take any other general oh, public comment? Oh, I didn't take public comment. I'm sorry. Thank you, Blake. Do we have any hands raised? No hands raised online. Any other comments in the room? Um, yeah, I can't see. On, okay. We've got none over there. So, <laughs> okay, I'll close public comment for this item. And Susan, okay. now that I've gotten it right, could you now pull the vote? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Commissioner Altman. Yes. Commissioner Greeno. Yes. Commissioner Howard. Yes. Commissioner Inscore. Yes. Commissioner Starkey. Yes. And Policy Advisory Member Tasha Alstrand. Yes. Okay. And, and I'll say yes to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for can, clarity on that item. Can we uh, can we just agree with consensus to provide the direction that Tamara asked for at this point in time, so we don't mm -hmm. end up not giving that that's, direction at the end of our meeting? That's pretty easy to do. Okay. Um, everybody, thumbs thank up. Thank you. Thumbs up all across the board. Yes. Easy. Thanks, Heidi. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah. Eric, Drew, thank you for braving the weather. <laughs> okay, now we'll back up to our consent agenda. Uh, we have four items, the minutes of November 1st, 2022, the contract amendment for the website and email hosting platform changes with uh, Green Dot Transportation Solutions, the overall work program amendment two, uh, and um, our 2021-22 audit. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve the consent and a second by Mr. Inscore. Do we have any public comment online? We don't have any public in the room anymore. Uh, so, Susan, would you please pull the vote? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Altman? Yes. Commissioner Inscore? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Greenow? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Starkey? Yes. Tasha Alstrand? Yes. And Chair Short? Yes. Okay, on to our discussion items, Tamara. Um, so the TAC met earlier today. We generally meet a week ago, but because of the holiday schedule, we met at 1 o'clock today um, to discuss next year's overall work program. And so given that the meeting lasted more than an hour and then we're here, um, I, I don't have a lot of detailed notes on this because we just had this conversation. Um, the highest priority project for the TAC members for next year's work program is to continue with our regional mapping and to potentially add funding or move funding up in time for that project. We have a contract for regional mapping with GHD for $20,000 a year for five consecutive years. Um, we, you know, I'll take a look at the, you know, when I get the overall work program sort of worked out, I'll take a look at how we can fund additional work, whether we move advance work 
we can't ad advance the funding, but we can advance the timeline in the contract, or if we amend the contract to add more money to the current year and keep the 20,000 a year for future years. So it's a technical detail that I'll work out, but that's the number one priority for the technical advisory committee. Um, we talked about um, working with the city to develop the coastal trail to connect Beachfront Park to the 6th, 6th Street for coastal trail. They have the planning work done courtesy of UC Berkeley. And so we would be looking at um, possibly making an allocation of planning, programming, and monitoring funding, or PPM funding, that would help with grant application information, perhaps an active transportation program application for Coastal Trail, that depending on how that comes together, it may or may not be on the work program, but it's work that we are anticipating for the 23-24 year. Um, <laughs> We're, we are having conversations about how to assist the county with the circulation element in partner in conjunction with the 2024 regional transportation plan update. How can we get some additional value uh, by um, working on those two projects simultaneously? So we don't really know yet, but it's a conversation that we're having. How can we be more efficient? And um, the, the biggest crunch point for this is that the um, short range transit plan for Rebel Coast Transit Authority needs to be updated. We completed the last short range transit plan just before COVID and so much has changed since then that we can't feasibly continue to work off a planning document that was done before COVID. It's also time that document is due every five years and I think that the last time we did it was in 2018 or maybe 19. They did a mini update because they needed to but it's really time for a full update. We're um, having conversation with, I'm, I will be having a conversation with Joe Rye and Tasha Allstrand about how to fund that short range transit plan and market research with um, planning grant funding, a Caltrans planning grant. Um, those planning grants are, um, you know, they take a lot of time to pull together. They're very competitive. Um, one of the things, I don't know that I've mentioned it to you, but the Transportation Commission is still working off of 2013 budget dollars. So raise your hand if your agency is still working off a 2013 budget. Because yeah. you see, I'm the only one here in the room with my hand raised. Um, I continuously talk to the state about that. Um, part of the challenge is that the regional transportation planning agencies across the state aren't all spending all of their money. So it puts the state staff in an awkward position when say five or six of the rural regions are saying we can't continue to work like this, but the other regions are returning funding every month or every year because they're not spending their money. Um, I, I don't know how they're getting their work done and I don't believe, frankly, I don't believe that they're getting all of their minimum work done um, because they're not spending the money. If we can't keep up just, you know, on our 2013 dollars, um, how are they giving money back? So um, I think that a lot of the, um, there are some re regional agencies that are combined with county offices. I think in, in some of those ways they've lost staff, they just can't get the work done for staffing reasons. I really don't know. I don't, you know, I mean, and it's not my role to evaluate them. I know that that's a barrier is that the state, Caltrans state staff, really isn't comfortable going back to the legislature and asking for more money for regional planning when so many of the agencies aren't even spending it. When, Give it to us. I, right? <laughs> I mean, we're doing a good job. We'll take it. I mean, I just, well, right, that's exactly, but the, the RPA is actually a grant and it's, it's a grant that we receive every year that we don't have to apply for, but it is truly a grant. So we can't take the, a, a neighboring county can't just shift over and send us their RPA funding. It doesn't really work like yeah. that. So um, the state understands the, that operating on $2,013 when you're getting all your work done is not possible, but they don't have a solution either. Um, my understanding is basically the same five regional agencies apply for funding over and over and over because 
we're the only ones who need it. So, um, yeah, hi, colleagues. Uh, you know, the few of us who do, and the rest of them have, you know, they return funding. What, what happens to that return funding is just about every year, um, Caltrans offers what I call the, um, the carryover funding from other agencies, and we, then you can apply for the leftovers. I call them it's the leftovers. You, but you still have to apply for that funding. Um, I don't want to be in a position to have to apply for funding to do our basic work. I mean, we're just doing the basics here. We're not doing fancy things. And when it takes a grant application to do the basics, like the short-range transit plan, I, it makes me cranky. Um, I, I, you know, I mean, the state has these mandates, and they say that they fund this mandate. But if we are not getting our basic work done, then how can that be true? So I am going to talk to um, Joe Rye. We talked a little bit in the tech meeting today. I don't even know if it's possible. As he says, he, you know, they don't know that they have the staff time to pull together a planning grant. I could work with them on that, but you know, time is short everywhere. How are you going to pull all this together? So I really don't know. Um, we could potentially hire a consultant to put together the transportation planning grant, grant on behalf of transit and us because it's you know we've traditionally paid for this short-range transit plan with rpa funding um, but i don't know how it's going to come together so um, that's the information the priorities that we have right now we also talked about um, adding a component to our crowdsourcing right now when you're printing outputs from crowdsourcing they come in the form of, a, of an excel document and so how to convert that Excel document to a more workable, visual, um, um, un publicly understandable yeah. um, information. That's the next phase in our crowdsourcing that we've looked at, talked about. Um, you know, overall with the crowdsourcing, we have underspent in that funding area, but because it's been RPA funding, it rolls over into the next year. So you can have carryover funding within your own agency, but it can't be more than 25%. So when I'm talking about these agencies and carryover funding, they are carrying over more than 25% of their RPA funds that are awarded to them. Um, it's a pretty convoluted system. You can't even ask for less. Say, I didn't, think, I didn't think that we were gonna ask for, need our $230,000. Say I thought we were only gonna need $150,000. I can't just request less funding. I mean, it, you get what you get. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not the friendliest, most flexible of systems, but it's, you know, I, want, I mean, I want you to understand, people understand our challenge of still operating on 2013 budget. The solution is harder than you could, than I could imagine. Even um, we're just pretty much stuck. So I, we're going. Oh, everybody's. I mean, we keep working on it. I mean, every, every rural counties task force meeting every other month, this topic comes up in our state meeting, and Caltrans is like, yeah, yeah, Tamara, we hear you. <laughs> I, you know, along with my couple other colleagues. But do we have a solution? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. So our priority is, our, our really, our number one priority is the regional mapping with a focus on ADA and stormwater drain, drainage and how to push those topics forward. Um, the the, the short-range transit plan, I don't think we have the funding to move forward with the short-range transit plan next year along with the regional mapping. Um, so I'll come back in the next meeting after fleshing out some of these things, I'll go to the TAC with a draft overall work program rough in budget. We'll review that with the commission so we'll have know what topics we're, we are proposing to address. The following meeting, we'll have a final overall work program after getting comments from the TAC and the commission. We'll have a final OWP. That final OWP is traditionally just in the consent agenda because we have talked about it repeatedly. So I... I just have, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Greedo. <laughs> I just have a quick question. Would it be uh, beneficial for this body to lobby our um, elected representatives on the state level to try to get a fix for this particular no, funding? It really wouldn't. 
Oh. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just being honest. Okay. It, it, I, would, I would have asked five years ago if I thought that would help, okay. but I really don't think that it would help. It's a, it's, a, it's a state staff issue, and we are the anomaly in needing the funding, along with a few of my colleagues, I, you know. And all I can say is we're doing a good job. I mean, we're, we're keeping up. We, we, do, we do our planning documents on time. We're going to be on time one way or another with a short-range transit plan. And if we're not, it's certainly not going to be by a lack of effort. They're due every five years. The regional transportation plan, um, you know, will cost about, say, $90,000. We have to update that every four years. That's, I mean, that's a pretty big lift every four years to update that third, the little things that come along the way, and then just the general planning work that takes up the bulk of the budget. Okay. Just a question, Tamara. So um, let's assume that, that, that we can't get both of these things done, right? That there's not enough funding for both the, 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 the mapping and the, and the short, short range plan. <laughs> as, as you see that money come available, that, the leftover money, whatever <laughs> that's called, Mm -hmm. Is it is is there um, is there a scenario where okay we know we're not going to get this done because of funding but we also know that there's the potential to put in for this can we then target I know that that's you don't want to try to do our regular work mm -hmm. with grant money but if we know that we can't get it done mm -hmm. does it make sense to then to towards the end of the year when that money becomes available just simply say well we're going to put in a grant for this. Um, I, I don't know what timing wise, I don't, I don't know how, how fast that money has to be used. But. Yeah, and I don't either. The, the state really wants to get away from that process because sure. it's, it's, a, it's an extra grant application, and, review, yeah, yeah. process, all of those things, but they also need something reasonable to do with the money. So they're having a hard time balancing out the staff time it takes to run this and it's a pretty simple process. We've applied for this and received this, the leftover money um, a couple of times before. I think the more recent one was on the Elk Valley Crossroad Corridor Plan was yep. funded with leftover funding. And, you know, very effective, that project very effectively led to solutions at Elk Valley Crossroad in US 199 and gave us a lot more information that we need at 101 and really helped the community to understand um, the diversity that we see on Elk Valley Crossroad overall and the challenges. So we've, we've got the information we need on Elk Valley Crossroad should we decide to move forward with a project there in the future. But we already have important takeaways from that planning work. But absolutely, I mean, I don't, I don't know how we're going to pull together an application for the um, short range transit plan, but I think that we are. I just don't know how yet. Um, I don't, don't know that if it will be a combination of Joe Rye's work, my work, and a consultant assistant. I just, we have to have those conversations. So hopefully in the next meeting, I'll come back with a solution, an idea, whatever for that too. Yeah, and, and even if that's not feasible for this leftover money, I think that, I think that, um, I mean, obviously, you do, do a masterful job of trying to manage a 2013 budget because we get stuff done uh, you know right. so you know how to do that and, and you don't need me to, to help you with that but with on the work plan maybe there's something that's a low priority thing that's that that's if we get to it we get to it but it's on the work plan maybe that's a leftover thing and you just target in the back of your mind hey this is not going to be some this is something that 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 we may not get to but if there's funding available I don't know, Tamara, I'm just looking yeah. for any ways for us to maximize the, the money that we could get in some fashion to benefit our community. And you know more about that than I do, but. Yeah, that would be a little project like our um, updating our public participation plan, which Something. I think I wrote in 2013, but the way public participation works these, ways, these days is completely different. Oh, yeah. That planning document needs to be updated. It's a little document, but we need to have that updated before our 2024 regional transportation plan update. I mean, I, I've got all these things sort of slotted in my mind about how are we gonna pull it all together together. Um, but in terms of projects in the work program, each project in the overall work program must be defined and funded in the work program as a work element. So 
it's the budgets the the work plan itself is inflexible yeah. um so you know i did we'll figure it out we'll get there somehow or we won't and the short-range transit plan will be a year late and the regional transportation plan will be a year late and you know i don't think that any there will be any crisis because of that and if the state asks i'll say we're operating on a 2013 budget I, you know, I'll go to a CTC meeting and talk about that. I, you know, they don't want me to do that because nobody's operating on a 2013 budget. But um, I, I mean, there's not going to be any crisis. There's not going to be any funding loss. But I also don't do things late. Just as a, as your professional, I don't do things late, and we haven't yet. So I'm hoping that we can continue to do things on time. Thank you, Jen. We very much appreciate the job you do for sure keeping us all straight and, and going in the right directions. Uh, do we have any comments on last chance grade? Any updates? I, I have nothing to, um, uh, no updates on last chance grade or on 199 at Elk Valley Crossroad. Okay. Um, that that um, project is continuing to move forward and I look forward to the day that I can take this off the agenda. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, I went to Humboldt County yesterday and it looked like Cushing Creek is just about ready to open back up. It, it changed the lanes a little bit, but I don't know. I, I don't know what the timeline is on that one, but remaining hopeful. You know, um, Tasha, can you maybe in the next meeting give us an update on Cushing Creek? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. And also on, um, I know that we recently had an update, but I've had several members of the public ask questions about Dr. Finebridge. Hmm. So uh, if, you know, I'll, Tasha, I'll talk to you after the meeting sometime next week about Dr. Finebridge. Um, but I think that we need um, some more public information, maybe a public meeting explaining to people how Dr. Finebridge is going to work. I don't know. Um, there's, there are a lot of questions. There's a lot of fear about Dr. Finebridge. And the way that they're um, working that bridge replacement, there's not going to be, sign I mean, they're not going to close down the bridge. They're not going to drop the bridge into the river. They're not going to, I mean, yeah. the, all oh, of I the things have. that come up, I, you know, the, the, there's going to be an alternative travel path. There will be some, some delays, but there isn't going to be a one, at least th that's proposed. There's not a proposed one lane. There's going to continue to be two lanes to the traveling public. Yeah, that yeah. yeah, would be good for the public to, to know those those kind of things. Um, okay, we're on to uh, Policy Advisory Committee comments and reports. Is there anybody that has any reports for the good of the order? No? Tasha? I have a few, if, if I may. There you go. Thank you, Tasha. Go right okay, ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, just Clean California, the cycle two of the Clean California local grant program is kicking off with a one-time increase of approximately $100 million. The call for projects will be in January with an application deadline in April 2023. Um, the sustainable transportation planning grant program that Tamara mentioned as a potential funding source for the transit development plan update. There'll be a call for projects on January 12th with a full week eight full eight weeks for application development applications due on March 9th. So eligible applicants for this program include cities, counties, RTPAs, and tribes. And this cycle, there's a $50 million set aside for climate, climate adaptation planning funding. So, um, and they've also waived the local match for tribes on that. Um, District one will be hosting a workshop on January 31st. Then I have a couple of project updates. Uh, the Timbers Boulevard left turn channelization project. The project initiation document was approved in June. The project was programmed on October 12th with studies beginning in January this month. PADD scheduled for September 2024 with uh, ready to list status for December 2025 and construction summer of 2026. We're also hopeful to initiate another safety project close by for left turn channelization on 101 at Rowdy Creek Road. And then an update on the Del Norte 199 road safety audit. There have been some staff changes in our safety team and Sherry Rodriguez is now our, our new traffic division chief. And a new project manager has been assigned to this project. His name is Grant Wilcox. The consultant contract has five meetings that will be scheduled sometime in the next few weeks. And we're currently finalizing our stakeholder list and putting together a, a team of a local team. 
Um, and just one more update about an another staffing changes here in District 1. The Deputy District Director for Planning and Local Assistance, Brad Meno, he retired on December 22nd, and Brandon Larson is his successor. Um, I'm sure some of you have worked with Brandon before, but he's been in the district for 17 years. Thank you. Very good, Tasha. Thank you. Any questions about Tasha's report from anybody? Okay. Well, with that, we will uh, adjourn as the Policy Advisory Committee and reconvene as the Delaware Transportation Commission and by poll vote approve and adopt the actions taken by the Policy Advisory Committee. And so it, um, I don't guess I'm, no, I don't need to take public comment. Sorry, go okay. ahead. Play. Move that we approve the policy advisory committee uh, actions. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Susan, will you pull the vote, please? Sure. Commissioner Altman? Yes. Commissioner Greeno? Yes. Commissioner Inscore? Yes. Commissioner Starkey? Yes. Chair Short? Yes. And with that, we will adjourn until the next regularly scheduled meeting, Tuesday, February 7th mm -hmm. at 3 p.m. right here at the yep. Flynn Center.